Hello friends, I am Mayantika and in this video I will be discussing about another seaweed and another algae that is used as human food. It is kombu. Kombu mostly Laminaria japonica and Laminaria saccharina. These are the two most commonly used species that goes by the name of kombu. Though there are other species also of Laminaria that are used as kombu that goes by the name of kombu. So a laminaria uh, or kombu, it is a very um, popular uh, source of popular um, seaweed that has been used traditionally by the Japanese people and now it has been used throughout the world, especially in the European countries and in America, Canada, people have started uh, realizing the nutrition dense um, and this uh, nutrition dense weed that is kombu. Kombu or seaweed, uh, kombu laminaria is a uh, brown algae. And uh, this, uh, this uh, la uh, kombu, it has got intense uh, growth and uh, so it is Traditionally, uh, uh, it were harvested from the wild, but now due to excessive demand, it is uh, the most uh, important and cultivated, most common cultivated weed in Japan. So uh, this uh, video that is about kombu will be the sixth video in the series of algae as human food. I have made other videos regarding uh, uh, other seaweeds, especially nori, dulse, green liver, gusho, and sea grapes. All the uh, link I have put in the description box. So let's start the video. There are many species of laminaria that are now cultivated. And this cultivation, though earlier it was um, present only in Japan, but nowadays China and um, Korea, they are also cultivating this laminaria because these la uh, kombu is a part of both, uh, not only just Japanese, but also Chinese and Korean cuisine. Laminaria japonica and Laminaria saccharina, they are the most uh, commonly cultivated of all laminaria, though Laminaria agastata, Laminaria longizima, Laminaria coriacea, Gelma niela scalpuria, Laminaria longi pedalis, Gelma niela gyrate, and Laminaria sicoroides. These are also used um, as uh, kombu. Kombu or laminaria, they grow in the uh, intertidal and the subtidal region that is in the marine coastal system and they are found to be grown attached to rocks with the help of uh, this uh, holdfast like structure, holdfast or haptera. This is the holdfast this is the hold first and uh, then they have this, this uh, stalk like type and then they have this blade. This is a very simplified version what I am showing you. Uh, this, is, this is a very common structure for all the brown algae and uh, this is how uh, the laminaria if it's a very rough diagram of how of laminaria this is the hole first this is the this is the stipe and this is the blade now laminaria they uh, have to uh, they have to uh, they are um, there is uh, strong waves so they are protected from the strong waves by um, alginic acids in their cell wall that makes the, uh, this alginic acid this hydrocolloid this is uh, uh, this gives a leathery texture to this laminaria and uh, this uh, alginic acid it protects from the various um, uh, strong waves and uh, this laminaria mostly uh, it grows uh, averagely uh, it grows 2 to uh, 10 meter so you can see that it is uh, quite, it is a macroscopic algae and uh, 
this though the, it can grow much more uh, higher uh, and it has got high growth rate but uh, this laminaria along with uh, most of the brown algae they are uh, limited to the cold water they do not grow in a warm climate they actually they have a very stunted growth in very warm climate now this this is this is the picture this is a picture of kombu roll where um, meat, uh, fish or tofu or um, it is um, wrapped up in laminaria. So this is the kombu roll. Now this is a very soupy, uh, this is another very soupy dish. Um, uh, this is, we see here the white one, daikon radish with carrots and chopped up kombu they are uh, they are stewed together actually uh, kombu has got an umami flavor this umami flavor or meaty flavor for this meaty flavor it is actually used as a stock a uh, basic um, uh, base for all other now uh, laminaria or kombu which is very uh, commonly called kombu in japan goes by the name of dashima in korea and haidai in china i i am not a uh, i don't uh, know the correct uh, pronunciation maybe i'm wrong about dashima haidai uh, if i'm not a native speaker of uh, korean and chinese so please pardon the wrong pronunciation if i have done so uh, kombu it is traditionally it was eaten by people of southeast asia mostly china and japan and also icelandic population because this grows in very um, uh, cold uh, climate that is a temperate and polar region so uh, the native people of this uh, region that is china japan icelandic uh, population they have been traditionally used but nowadays we are all aware of um, the nutrients uh, that are present in the seaweeds and also um, uh, their, uh, the macrobiotic diet that uh, the Japanese people they follow they, uh, they it has become very popular actually uh, the Japanese people they are mostly uh, Buddhist so they do not consume uh, meat so uh, they have got various alternative uh, vegetarian um, uh, supplements like uh, say for example the seaweeds which are very nutrients dense and they make up uh, for uh, the meat that they are not eating so this vegetarian diet of the japanese people they are now very much becoming common in the European countries and uh, especially this macrobiotic diet. A macrobiotic diet consists of only uh, 40 to 60 percent of diet is the whole grains or cereals and rest 20 to 30 percent is fruit and vegetable. The rest uh, 10 to 25 percent can be seaweeds or bean products. Bean products include tofu, miso, tempeh, this type of products. So here we see that this diet is mostly um, whole grains which is, it has got high fiber, carbohydrate, fruit and vegetables, got vitamins and minerals as well as fiber and, um, and the rest that is the bean uh, products and seaweeds. They are also very nutrient dense but at the same time this fermented products like tofu, um, they as well as the seafood, they are very good in stimulating the probiotic uh, bacteria that are present in our gut. So, uh, due to all this reason nowadays, uh, the seaweeds, they are becoming very popular in uh, throughout the world. And uh, the, the, but one disadvantage is, is that it has got iodine toxicity. If you consume too much of uh, this kombu, then you can have this iodine toxicity. So, uh, if you are having kombu on a daily basis, you are having it for the breakfast, lunch, dinner, then you can face this iodine toxicity. But however, if you use this uh, uh, 
kombu and other seaweeds like nori and uh, the like wakame and nori these uh, seaweeds are also these three seaweeds kombu wakame and nori they are very dense in iodine they have excess iodine so you can have if you are consuming it for daily basis you will have iodine toxicity so what do i mean by iodine toxicity iodine toxicity uh, means that uh, it will have if you are having excess iodine in your body then uh, the thyroid gland will be over functioning you will have hyper thyroidism and at the same time due to over functioning of the thyroid gland the thyroid gland will become inflated the inflammation of thyroid gland it is called thyroiditis now thyroiditis is also a disease in itself because long term inflammation of thyroid gland or thyroiditis will cause uh, under activity of the thyroid gland that is hypothyroidism in a long course of time it will cause hypothyroidism and if this um, continues further for the long period of time then you can have thyroid papillary cancer so this is one disadvantages uh, so we should be very uh, specific not to consume it on daily basis these three weeds that is kombu wakame and nori so apart from uh, feed uh, kombu is also used as a biofuel uh, especially kombu um, it is uh, fermented with uh, this bacteria escherichia coli or e coli that has been genetically modified uh, this genetically modified e coli converts um, the and this feeds on the fiber of kombu and converts the oil matter that is present in kombu into ethanol which is a very good source of biofuel and nowadays we know that uh, the uh, sources the uh, non renewable sources uh, of uh, uh, petrol or diesel they are becoming very rarer and also they are becoming uh, they will uh, um, they will be gone in uh, a few uh, decades from now so there has been an international trend to uh, sh uh, shift to other type of renewable fuel especially algae use of algae as biofuel production of biological hydrogen uh, so I have made videos uh, of uh, biological hydrogen production as well as algal biofuel. I have put the uh, link in the description box. So if you are interested, uh, do go to those uh, videos also. Uh, kombu it has got a very uh, crunchy uh, leathery texture and at the same time it has got a umami flavor that is a meaty flavor so uh, this uh, kombu actually uh, it is boiled kombu is boiled um, along with other uh, flavorant and uh, it is uh, used uh, that uh, boiled stock is used as a base that that is called the dashi um, broth the boiled kombu in other um, type of flavorant they form the dashi stock and this is used as a base for other type of soupy dishes uh, especially other type of um, uh, vegetables are uh, cooked in it to give the uh, meaty flavor also meat and fish are also um, uh, cooked can be cooked in this dashi stock dashi stock it forms the basis of all type of cuisines all the soupy cuisines and um, so uh, the leftover um, kombu from the dashi stock can be shredded shredded into thin pieces and eaten along with sashimi or can be eaten with other type of equally thin shredded vegetables for example thinly shredded kombu with uh, thinly shredded daikon radish and carrots together with certain here we see here we see that uh, the kombu this is the this thin kombu is um, with other type of vegetables and sesame seeds it is used as a as a salad and 
kombu uh, the broth of kombu can be also used uh, to flavor the other meat type of dishes especially steak uh, lamb roasted vegetables and if kombu is uh, cooked along with the legumes they they increase the digestibility of the legumes and whole grain cereals uh, kombu due to the uh, it is it is rich in this glutamic acid this amino acid gives the umami flavor and so it has been used to substitute ajina moto which was earlier used but nowadays due to its toxicity known to uh, us it is no uh, no more used so this uh, kombu uh, can be very good uh, source uh, good substitute for msg or ajina moto so a uh, kombu can also be used as a sushi wrapper kombu can be also boiled for a good uh, refreshing tea uh, along with the japanese green tea uh, uh, with the uh, tea, li tea leaves uh, this uh, kombu seaweed that is a laminaria it is chopped and uh, boiled at uh, the same time with uh, green tea and uh, it is also it is actually sold dried or in pickled form it is pickled in vinegar and uh, cane sugar and then it can be eaten um, this pickled uh, kombu can be eaten with beans when eaten with beans it increases the digestion of beans this uh, kombu can also be used uh, uh, cooked kombu can be used um, uh, to be uh accompanying as a rice as a side dish for rice this is this is the suku dani that i have been talking about that this uh, suku dani it is a very good side dish with rice with steamed rice kombu can be powdered and it can be used uh, it can be mixed with uh, the various bakery uh, ingredients and uh, main reason for putting this kombu in uh, as a bakery item is because of its slight salty and sweet taste actually this kara futo kombu it is very uh, rich in mannitol we know that all the brown algae they have their reserve food matter as either laminary and mannitol mannitol is very sweet in taste which imparts sweetness to kombu this slight sweetness of mannitol as well as the slight salty flavor this is this creates a very um, uh, good combination to be used as a bakery item and laminaria japonica which goes by the name of ma kombu also uh, is used to produce a broth that this broth it is called dashi stock and uh, and another the uh, laminaria augustata is also used to make dashi stock in fact dashi stock is the base for various type of uh, soupy as well as uh, other type of dishes in japan china and korea and laminaria oko tensis this is this is this uh, uh, species of laminaria is very thin and ruffled and they can be uh, uh, due to this uh, thinness uh, it is um, uh, mostly used as a salad uh, along with daikon radish and carrots so far i have been talking about the uses culinary uses of uh, kombu but now uh, let's uh, look at the nutrition it is very rich in vitamin various type of vitamin here we see uh, vitamin a vitamin a we know that deficiency of vitamin a it brings diseases like night blindness xerophthalmia so vitamin a is essential not only for our eyesight which is very important and also for maintaining uh, immunity actually vitamin a it help in boosting immunity by 
proliferating the WBC, the white blood cells in our body. So it plays a very important role in innate immunity and also it, this is very good uh, for our skin and eyesight. Then we have vitamin D. Vitamin D, we all know that it is very much essential. Vitamin D is produced in the uh, epidermal layer, lower epidermal layer of our skin when we get exposed to sunlight. And so it is, an, it is naturally produced in our body. But people who are um, suffering for, say, for example, skin cancer, they won't... Uh, they won't um, uh, be able to go out in the sunlight because they are al already suffering from uh, skin cancer or if say you are allergic uh, you are allergic to sunlight you have certain rashes coming out so uh, you can take vitamin either source of vitamin that you are going to take is either uh, the supplements or you can take it by consuming this combo vitamin D it is very essential because uh, it helps in the uh, absorption of calcium magnesium and phosphorus in our diet in our gut so if we are having calcium magnesium phosphorus in our diet but we are having deficiency of vitamin d then uh, we will have the deficiency of these minerals also because they will not be properly absorbed by our uh, gut and uh, vitamin uh, d it is um, it is found uh, it is it is actually converted into either cholecalciferol or ergocalciferol both of which helps in the bone growth it it acts as a it also helps in various cellular uh, division process and it boosts immunity next is our vitamin e vitamin e we know it is a very good antioxidant vitamin e and uh, vitamin B complex, which is uh, made up of various type of vitamins, that is vitamin B1 or thiamine, vitamin B2 riboflavin, vitamin B3 niacin, vitamin B5 pantothenic acid, vitamin B6 pyridine, uh, pyridoxine, vitamin B7 biotin, vitamin B9 folate, and vitamin B12. Cobalamin. So these vitamin B complexes, they act as coenzyme or precursor of coenzymes in various metabolic processes in our body. So for the proper functioning of various metabo uh, metabolic processes in our body, the vitamin B complex vitamins are very much essential. So our no a combo contains vitamin A, D, E and B in huge amount. Minerals that are present in high amount in this uh, combo is calcium that is very good for um, bone formation, osteogenesis and uh, calcium deficiency can cause diseases like rickets, like osteomalacia and uh, osteoporosis. So then we have this potassium. Potassium and uh, sodium, they are very much essential because ionic balance of potassium and sodium can cause um, heart related uh, trouble. Ionic imbalances can cause your heart attack. So potassium and sodium, they maintain ionic balance in the blood. They actually, they form a channel, for sodium potassium channel that is present in the plasma membrane. So uh, potassium and sodium, they regulate the fluid balance, they regulate the muscle contraction, they regulate the neural signalings in our body and also sodium maintains the osmotic balance in our body sodium na sodium then we have this magnesium magnesium they are very essential for the formation of uh, the connective tissues as well as they form various part of hormones and then we have this phosphorus
Phosphorus has got, uh, it, 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 is, uh, it uh, stabilizes the tertiary structure of various type of um, proteins or enzymes in our body and uh, this uh, uh, phosphate also forms, uh, it is very much essential uh, also for the bone formation. Then we have this iodine. Uh, now this iodine is present in excess amount. Iodine if absent in our diet will cause goiter and hypothyroidism but excess amount of iodine can also cause um, hyperthyroidism, it can cause thyroiditis. It can cause thyroid papillary cancer. So we should be very careful about this iodine uh, toxicity that it, that can be occurring if you consume kombu in excess amount. The fats that are present in kombu as well as other type of seaweeds are polyunsaturated fatty acids. This polyunsaturated fatty acids as a name shows that it is unsaturated. This It helps in maintaining proper uh, circulatory uh, system. It, it prevents circulatory system diseases like cardiovascular uh, problems and at the same time they are very much essential for the proper functioning of the cells as well as the for the nervous system they are antioxidant these uh, unsaturated fatty acids they are antioxidant they are antidepressants um, they prevent cardiovascular disease they are very much essential for proper maintaining of skin nervous system also memory and eyesight so these are uh, PUFA, they are very much essential for the, uh, not only uh, the grown-up but also for kids. The uh, kombu, the protein portion of kombu is very high and that is one of the reason why uh, they have very much used in uh, the diet of Buddhist population that is mostly in China, Japan, Korea and nowadays due to this um, therapeutic, due to this high uh, protein content, um, kombu has been also used in the European countries, in America, in Canada due to this high protein protein content and high vitamin mineral content and low fat content apart from that it has got also fucoxanthin now fucoxanthin is a accessory pigment in uh, in accessory pigment in uh, the photosynthetic system and uh, this uh, brown algae they unlike the green algae which have abundance of chlorophyll brown algae has got abundance of other uh, pigments that is the xanthophylls fucoxanthin is a xanthophyll and it is present in uh, all other brown algae uh, this combo which is laminaria apart from that in fucus and Andaria, Andaria is a wakame, they also have got high amount of fucoxanthin. Fucoxanthin, apart from brown algae, it is also present in the diatoms. So, uh, this fucoxanthin has got antioxidant, anti obesity, anti tumor, anti diabetic, anti inflammatory properties, and it is cardioprotective. It is cardioprotective. So antioxidant means that uh, it helps in scavenging the reactive oxygen species that is present in our body. Reactive oxygen species are produced by normal metabolism but uh, fucoxanthin help in reducing the reactive oxygen species by, and thus reduce the oxidative stress in our body. Uh, fucoxanthin also has got anti-obesity that, uh, that is it makes us feel full for uh, uh, for a longer period of time. It blocks the progression of tumor in our body. Also, it increases the uh, insulin sensitivity. It increases the insulin sensitivity and prevent 
or uh, controls diabetes. It has got anti-inflammatory property. In fact, any any or um, uh, any any uh, substance that has antioxidant property will have this anti-inflammatory property too. And it is cardioprotective and then we have this algal polysaccharides. There are many algal polysaccharides um, all the in the brown algae and the marine algae, uh, laminarin, manitol, uh, sorry, lam laminaria, fucus and um, andaria and many other species, they produce uh, polysaccharides that is the hydrocolloids, especially agar, algin and carrageenan, these are the most common hydrocolloids that we obtain from brown algae. And all these hydrocolloids, they have got therapeutic property apart from the gelling property uh, due to which it is used as a stabilizer, as a emulsifier in various cosmetic as well as pharmaceutical industry. But this algal polysaccharides have got many therapeutic use also. Uh, especially this here, um, this algal polysaccharide, they act as a chelator, they act as a chelator of heavy metal. If you are exposed to heavy metal and uh, the algal diet, a diet of kombu will help in uh, absorbing the heavy metals from our body and it will be removed through the feces. So, in this way, uh, heavy metal accumulation in our body can be prevented by the diet of kombu. And other uh, enzymes like this alpha galactosidase and beta galactosidase. Now, alpha galactosidase and beta galactosidase, uh, these, these are the two enzymes. Uh, that are very much essential uh, for a uh, proper um, of, to improve our uh, digestive system and uh, these type of uh, enzymes they are found in active form and the main uh, reason is that uh, they improve our digestion power this uh, live enzyme alpha and beta galactosidase they help in breaking of sugars complex sugars and usually those sugars that are normally undigested by us are made digestible by these type of two galactosidase that is alpha and beta galactosidase. They break down the complex sugar. Now cultivation earlier it was harvested from wild but now due to high demand cultivation has been started in uh, china japan and in china japan and korea mostly it is cultivated in the uh, coastal area in the tidal intertidal and uh, subtidal region it is hung on the rope lines and it grows due to high growth rate it grows um, very fast and uh, it can uh, reach uh, 10 to uh, 20 uh, meter over a period of uh, one year and it is harvested usually annually that is once a year and once it is harvested it is uh, then processed that is it is soaked in vinegar and then dried once dried it is then compressed to remove further moisture and once this processing is done it is then a set aside to age and develop flavor then after the aging or maturing of kombu it is cut into small pieces and packed in your tight containers and uh, in this airtight container, um, when you just open it, uh, you should not remove the salty layer. The salty layer at the top, it contains various uh, type of, uh, so if you remove the salt, will uh, remove a lot of minerals that are present in it. And so, this was all about. Uh, these are the um, these are the suppliers of kombu in uh, any supermarket that you can find it, and. Uh
So this was the end of uh, combo part. I will uh, be making another video about Wakame. That will be, I think, hopefully the last video of this series. Uh, Wakame and area. Uh, the video will soon follow this video. I have made other videos regarding uh, this algae as food, algae as feed, algae uh, and various uses, algae as fertilizer, algae as biofuel and links that I have put in the description box. In case I have missed any point or you want me to discuss anything uh, more about any topic and any new topic, do write it in the comment section and in case you liked my video, do share with your friends. And your subscription will encourage me to make more videos. Thank you.